A lot of you are going to want to know, is the FK Bruno a decent self-defense pistol? I've got a target downrange, and I'm going to see if I can make three headshots in rapid succession. Ryan, go ahead and set me up. Let me know when you're ready. Count me down. Shooter ready. Stand by. Threat. Hey guys, James with TFB TV, and today on TFB TV, we're talking about the FK Burno PSD. Let's go ahead, get it out of our systems. I, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking the same thing too. Let's just go ahead, F Bruno. Okay, that's what you wanted to say. Let's get the chuckles out, and let's get on with the review. We good? F Bruno. Now it seems like every influencer in the world got a copy of the FK Bruno PSD. So to try to do something a little bit different, we did a 1000 round review. And that's a lot of rounds for a powerful high pressure handgun like this one. But before we talk about the PSD, let's talk about the FK Bruno field pistol. Bear with me for just a sec and it'll all make sense. The field pistol's basically a massive CZ-75 and also made in the Czech Republic. It was introduced in 2015. It's designed to be a concealable firearm, but still capable of driving a flat, lethal shot at 100 yards. While it's technically concealable, it falls into that category of everything is concealable if you're brave enough, or flexible enough, I guess. It's much larger than a full-size 1911, and it weighs nearly three pounds unloaded, but it delivers faster than the FedEx man on bath salts. The field pistol can pop a 103 grain payload, that's about a 380 size round, at two f***ing thousand feet per second. Absolutely slapping ass with 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. To contextualize that, that's 25% more powerful than the hottest self-defense 357 Magnum load out there. Fortunately, recoil's manageable because of the heavy weight of the gun and the robust recoil mechanism it uses. It's like a lowered recoil rod with like a counterweight that drives straight back at a lower axis than the slide, which is why the gun looks like kind of an over-under. It actually kind of works too. I've heard people compare the recoil to something like shooting a 40 or a 45, and I, I think I would agree with that assessment. So the field pistol, which we reviewed a couple years ago on TFB TV, is powerful, controllable, kind of concealable. The catch is that the gun's priced like a 2013 Honda Civic at 7,500 bucks. The rounds are also $1.50 each, so that's like 2020 nine millimeter prices. I reviewed the field pistol a year or two ago, and I'll certainly forget to drop a link to that video by the time this one's uploaded. In the off chance I remember to put the card here, you'll see that my conclusion was, this is a really nice gun that's great to have if you have Oprah money and Gwyneth Paltrow sense. Apparently, FK Bruneau took my advice or more likely they watched a better YouTube channel than this one that came to the exact same conclusion and they, they took that advice, but you know, it's neither here nor there. The important thing is they've released a version of the field pistol that cost a fifth as much as its big brother. At $1,650, the new FK Bruno PSD isn't exactly cheap, but it makes a lot more sense than a silly custom 1911. The trade-off is minimal. More or less, this is the FK Bruno field pistol cosplaying as a Glock 40 MOS. It's got a polymer frame with a rail and the ability to mount an optic. Moreover, the PSD comes with a conversion barrel that will allow you to shoot 40 SW or 10 millimeter which would theoretically have allowed you to save money in the year 2019. This is a good opportunity to point out that while the mags for the PSD will hold 16 rounds of 7.5 FK, and 7.5 FK, by the way, is the proprietary caliber that the PSD and the field pistol shoot. Essentially, it's like somebody took a rocket ship and shoved it up a 380's ass. So those are those ballistics we were talking about, like you know, whatever, 2,000 feet per second with a 100 grain round, like insane numbers. And it's kind of cool because it's a bottleneck cartridge. Because of that bottleneck, that'll actually increase your feed reliability. So that's kind of neat, but they ship it with this conversion barrel that'll shoot 10 and 40. And for some reason, 
you use the exact same magazines for 10 and 40 that you use for 7.5 FK, but you can't get more than 10 rounds of 10 millimeter or 40 S and W into the magazine. I'm waiting for you guy who will explain in the comments and the 200 other viewers who will also do it after you who won't see your explanation and therefore leave the same comment over and over and over again telling me why this magazine will take 16 rounds of 7.5 FK but only 10 rounds of 10 millimeter. I don't know. And while we didn't shoot 40 S and W out of the PSD, 10 millimeter was an absolute pussycat because this gun's built to handle pressures 30 to 40 percent greater than what 10 millimeter makes. Let's see how this thing shoots with 10 mil, so 7.5. Ready? Yeah, I mean, a lot lighter recoiling. I mean, not a lot. It's a little bit lighter recoiling than the 7.5 FK, which I guess, if anything, shows you kind of how efficient this pistol is, because in my opinion, um, I think for how much power you get out of that 7.5 FK and more capacity, obviously, if money were no object, because that 7.5 FK is like $17 a round, um, I would just roll with the 7.5 FK. You know, why not? But it's nice to have the 10 mil option because you can get ammo that's a little bit cheaper, like less than 50 cents a round most of the time. Um, so kind of cool that they at least give you the option so you can get some practice in with it. Sold separately is a 9mm conversion kit that includes a barrel, two 17 round magazines, and a lighter recoil spring. I don't know how much this costs, but I did see the option to substitute the 9mm conversion kit for the 10mm conversion kit at no additional charge if you buy it from FK Burnett. I'd probably just go that 9mm kit route and try to buy the 10mm barrel alone if I still wanted it because the 9mm you're talking uh, a barrel, two magazines, recoil assembly. With the 10mm 40 you're getting just the barrel. So all things considered, I'd probably just buy the regular PSD with the 9mm conversion kit, buy the 10mm if I even wanted it separately. At 38 ounces, it's approximately the same weight as the CZ-75B, and it's a half pound lighter than the field pistol because of the polymer frame. It still uses the same recoil counterweight system, and it's therefore easy to control, albeit sluggish in a way that won't have you pushing out blistering splits. I guess you could hypothetically use this as a personal defense gun. You could. You would have to be somewhere where your, your targets, your adversaries, the, the things that you're protecting yourself against are huge. Like, you gotta think grizzly bears, or uh, I don't know, walruses, uh, people who live in Cleveland, so on. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. We're gonna see what we can do at five yards here, just rapid fire. Because I wanna test kind of the, uh, the recoil mitigation. And I mean, these sights are pretty precise on here. Sure, you guys have seen B-roll at this point in the video. They're tiny sights. So I wonder if we can kind of stay on target between the tiny sights and the recoil at this kind of distance. Okay, not really. The recoil is not bad for how much power you have. You lose those sights. I mean, between the power and the recoil. Uh, let's try it again. Okay. I mean, yeah, you can see it's kind of a little bit, okay. I mean, that's for five yards rapid fire, that's, that's not really all that great. Son of a bitch. And that first one gets right on target. I mean, you can see, like, so I've done that now. Um, this is the past two times, like look, one in the bullseye, then one in the bullseye, then they wander off. Could be because this thing kicks like a bitch, could be because it's got tiny sights, could be because I'm a pussy, but it also could be that this isn't necessarily meant for taking shots at rapid succession from 15 feet. So we're gonna give it a pass. Think about it like that, that kind of almost slow but hard recoil from say, like a large 1911. The good news is as long as you hit what you're shooting at the first time, 
you won't need to to finish the job. Related to that, the PSD has interchangeable sights. My copy had very small three dot irons that actually had me shooting a little bit high at 100 yards when shooting at a steel silhouette target. So you can see, not too bad. I mean, I fired probably two mags through it and one, two, three, four, five hits. But it's funny because I think I got three of these hits on the second mag because it wasn't until after the first mag that we figured out actually even with those sights being as low as they are to the slide of the gun I was having to aim low to make these hits so I was aiming like right around here crotch level on this poor dude previously uh, my first few shots one two three four yeah so one two three four five six previously I was aiming up anticipating that there might be a little bit of drop like kind of aiming at his head those were going over the first berm here. I prefer the excellent butterfly sights that come with the field pistol, but the three dots aren't that bad and they're small enough to allow you to attempt precise shots at distance without the front blade totally engulfing the target that you're shooting at downrange. I can't imagine the kind of damage you could do with a red dot mounted on the PSD that was zeroed to 100 yards. Barrel life on the PSD is 20,000 rounds for the 7.5 FK barrel and 30,000 rounds for the 10 millimeter or 40 S&W barrel. The finish on the slide can handle 30 plus hours of salt spray without cleaning or rusting. While the PSD is a chunky girl, she's still only 1.2 inches thick about the same thickness as a standard Glock. But as you see here, the PSD makes the Glock 19 look like a Glock 26 in comparison to this massive hunk of steel and polymer. Look at it, it's like baby gun and daddy gun. Ergos are great for a gun this large, and the controls are easy to use. I like the Gen 2 Glock type texture on the grip. The gun is of course single action only and has about a four and three quarter pound trigger pull. That is very good. As I mentioned earlier in this video, we had 15 hundred dollars worth of ammo at our disposal. That's right, a whole case of ammo at a buck fifty a round. We shot a little more than half of it and then we left the rest at the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center where staff and customers got to try out this beast of a handgun. We didn't clean the PSD after we got it and we experienced no failures to feed or extract. The range kept a logbook and apparently they had either 14 light strikes or failures to fire. St. Bernard cleaned the gun after 300 rounds and the issue never came up again, indicating to me that this could have been caused by a batch of ammo with some hard primers, like maybe one box of ammo that had a bunch of hard primers in it, or maybe the gun just needed some lube after it left the factory. Because the final 700 round stretch had no issues at all. We ran a few boxes of 10 millimeter through the PSD as well and function with it was flawless. The shooting experience was good. As powerful as this gun is, it really is manageable and it's a little bit thrilling. The gun has a couple of little knobs on the rear end of the slide, which I think are charging handles, but I'm not sure they're actually necessary. The action, smooth cycling, and most of the time the slide wants to ride the lightning in inertia charge if it gets a fresh mag insertion with even the slightest pep. It's definitely accurate thanks to that great crisp trigger and the precise sights. And although I didn't request one for review, you can get a brace or whatever the kids are calling full-blown shoulder stocks these days. Field stripping's not difficult, but the barrel does need a little tough love to get loose. A gentle wrap against a wood table on the muzzle end will pop it right out. Fit and finish for this gun is excellent, as you might expect. It's really a well-executed gun, mechanically speaking, and it's really well put together. So why? Why get the FK Bruneau PSD for $1,650? I mean, I've heard some people refer to it as game-changing, literally. There are gun writers who have said it's game-changing, but I guess that depends on your definition of the game. The last time I recalled saying game-changing, I believe it was about the SIG P365 or maybe the Shield S15 mags for the Glock 43X and the Glock 48. If you think that squeezing power that meets or exceeds 44 Magnum out of a handgun that holds 17 rounds relatively concealable and it's still relatively easy to shoot is game changing, then I guess it is. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but my personal opinion is that there's a very narrow set of circumstances where I might want to have a very large pistol instead of like a normal size 10 millimeter, a Glock 20, Glock 29, or instead of 
a small carbine. It's like this little narrow range the FK Bruno meets in between those. And I'm not saying those circumstances don't exist. For example, this pistol was allegedly invented for private security contractors in the Middle East who were involved in skirmishes between 50 and 150 yards on a semi-regular basis, I guess. That range is just beyond that of a sidearm, but perhaps maybe not worth lugging around a, a large carbine or a rifle all day. Although I will say if there are people shooting at me ever and I have the choice I'm probably gonna want a rifle but the 7.5 FK round in pistol format does cover that very small band on the practical use spectrum between more common and less expensive large handguns and more common and less expensive carbines FK Bruneau also suggests that this would be useful for bike cops private security, park rangers, or other jobs where the end user is going to be in a situation where a carbine might be impractical, but handgun options are pretty much unlimited. While I wouldn't rush out to get the PSD myself, there are some people who will have a use for this gun, even if it's just plain old fun, which this gun is. It's well made, it's fun to shoot, it's reasonably priced for what you get, and it's just flat out impressive. At 100 yards, the 7.5 FK is still hitting harder than 9mm point blank. I guess the FK Bruneau PSD fits into that box where I've got quite a few guns. And that box is the, would I personally buy it? No. But do I think there's anything wrong with it? No. Do I think you shouldn't buy it? No, absolutely not. If, if you're listening to what I just said and you're like, holy shit, that's what I need. Great. Jump in, both feet. Guys, that's all I got for you on TFB TV today. Thanks as usual for tuning in. Do you want to win a free gun? I mean, it wouldn't be one this expensive. It wouldn't be a PSD or anything like that, but maybe like a Glock or a SIG P320, something like that. Make sure that you support us. We are viewer supported on patreon.com slash TFB TV, subscribestar.com slash TFB TV. We don't do pay for play reviews. I did get a thousand rounds from the FK Bruneau people, but this gun's going back. They didn't pay me any money to do this. They just asked me to do it, just like 99.9% .9 of the videos that we do here on TFB TV. So viewer support goes a long way. If you're at the five or the $10 level, then you're automatically entered every month to win our drawing for one of four free guns given to us by our sponsor, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Guys, thanks again for watching. Take care.